Hey everyone, Barely Alec back again. I really appreciate all the support on the last Whetstone video. Like, that was actually insane. But now I have to do this challenge Nile too. So I'm feeling some mixed emotions here. Looks like Beppy isn't the only clown, since I gave my wonderful viewers a decision of which of the three initially available bosses to fight. And of course they chose the one that I thought might be impossible under my rule set that also bans dashing. I got a lot of comments asking why I banned that, and we're about to see firsthand why this rule makes things a lot more interesting, and way harder. But I'm getting ahead of myself here, let's start with phase 1. Here's a real high class bout! In this phase, Beppy's riding a bumper car as ducks move from right to left in the middle of the screen. Beppy inches forwards or backwards for about 3 seconds before charging into the side of the screen and turning around to repeat this process again. It's worth noting that his hitbox shrinks during this animation. I promise I'm not cheating. The ducks are the biggest threat here since I can't just dash under them while being above Beppy, but they can be whetstone to make them twirl, disabling their hitbox. Since we don't know exactly when Beppy's going to charge forwards, I constantly clear them until I see him pull back to telegraph the charge. I either parry off of Beppy's head to get a hit while he passes me, or parry a duck to safely avoid the attack if whetstoning Beppy would have resulted in me getting hit by the duck. The most common time to get hit though is during the 3-ish seconds before his charge. It's a bit awkward since you don't know if he's moving forward or pulling back, but if we line up our hits with the assumption that he'll move forward, we hit him if he does that and simply land on the ground again to readjust for another hit or dodge if he moves backwards. We also have to clear ducks during this if they're going to interfere with our hits or Beppy's charge. Ducks holding light bulbs take top priority to hit or run under here since they drop light bulbs on us for damage. That's pretty much it for this phase, it's really easy and I can consistently beat it without getting hit. Phase 2 isn't that bad either, but it's slightly worse than the first. Beppy's head fully inflates and is stationary on the top middle of the screen, which has a generous hurtbox, fortunately without a hitbox, so we can actually parry off of him without taking damage. The attack we have to look out for is the balloon dogs that spawn in groups of 2 to 4 at a time. These are typically easy to avoid since we can gain height by hitting the boss to go over and around them. The only complication is when the roller coaster goes by since it can damage us by ramming into cup- I'm sorry, lame stupid mug man. And once we're on it, we have to avoid the passengers which can put us in unwinnable situations if the balloons block our jumps. There's no dominant strategy here, we just have to try to dodge whatever patterns we get, which sometimes requires some precise short hops. We can still get some damage on the boss as the roller coaster goes by while potentially using that height to dodge, but we mainly get as many attacks as possible while it's in the background. Now for the real reason this boss is the hardest fight in this challenge so far, and undoubtedly the hardest thing I've attempted in any challenge run. The stupid donkey. The attacks aren't particularly threatening here. Attacking is. When I first tried this fight, it quickly became obvious that I needed more height to hit Beppy without getting hit myself. This is what I mean by not being able to dash making this challenge so much harder. If I could, I would simply whetstone under the donkey no matter which color it was and dash away before getting parried into a hitbox. Without dashing, we have to do something a little different. <sighs> Make sure the donkey's green since it's slightly closer to the ground, stand on the roller coaster as it's going by, wait for an opening between Charlie's attacks, line yourself to get ready to jump at the perfect moment, keeping in mind that you're on a moving platform and once you're there, hold jump till about when Mugman's reaching the indent between his mouth and nose. Start moving left while still holding jump, quickly let go of jump so you can press it again to wet zone Beppy and swiftly start holding right to front yourself from touching his hitbox and land ball avoiding any passengers in the way. Any questions? It's already bad that I have to do this 21 times during a single attempt, but you don't even know the half of it yet. Or should I say the quarter of it, since a donkey being green is a 50% chance, and it being on the left is another 50% chance, meaning it will only be in the right spot and right color 25% of the time. 
But it gets worse, don't you worry, since we also need the roller coaster to be passing by, and it spends more time off screen than on. And even if the roller coaster and Green Donkey are in the right places, it isn't uncommon that we won't be able to attack it since Charlie's horseshoes are in the way. So we can usually only get a hit or two every couple of minutes. I say or two because when everything aligns, it can semi often do so in a way where we can attack again, since the horseshoe attacks always happen twice before Beppy goes back off screen, and the short period of time between the two attacks and after the last attack gives us our opening. And even though the attacks themselves aren't too threatening, we'll be on this phase for a long time, greatly increasing our odds of getting hit. The Yellow Donkey's attacks are the easiest to avoid. If the coaster isn't on screen and won't be when the horseshoes hit the ground, just run under Charlie since they never fall there. If the coaster's on screen, just know that the attack always leaves an opening to get on it. So as long as you don't parry the nose, you'll be able to jump to safety. There are also times where you have to make the split second decision to jump on the roller coaster right before Charlie shoots or wait until right after the horseshoes go off screen and jump on the roller coaster right before it collides into you. Either way, it's a very short window if you get unlucky with how the attacks overlap. The green donkey is much harder to avoid, but is usually manageable. As long as the roller coaster isn't in the foreground, you can easily stand between where it arcs, or simply duck, which actually completely avoids the attack. This one gets a lot trickier to avoid if the roller coaster is approaching right as it starts, as you'll sometimes have to arc your jump over the front of the cart and under the horseshoes. Occasionally jumping over the passengers will also have this problem, but you'll sometimes be able to parry the one pink horseshoe to avoid having to go under, which is a little easier. This phase taking so long means that you'll almost certainly be forced to dodge at least a couple of bad patterns like this. You might be wondering why I can't just hit Beppy if the green donkey's on the right, and the simple answer is that I actually can. Nothing about the whetstone hit becomes impossible, just much, much harder. If only it were as easy as hitting that subscribe button. Sorry. In order to hit him on the right, we have to be moving against the roller coaster, which might seem easier at first, since I can just use a visual cue from the background to always jump at the same time, since moving against the coaster is slower than standing still on it, giving me more reaction time than hitting on the left. But the big flaw with this strategy is that the passengers get more in the way, since I now have to constantly jump over them as I adjust the whetstone hit, but I don't have a lot of time to do that with Charlie attacking again. Even if I do get the hit, I'm more likely to land on a passenger, since on the left side I would always be able to stand in front of a passenger cart before attacking Beppy to avoid them on my way down. Now's probably a good time to mention that the passengers are three carts apart from each other and there are three total carts with them on the roller coaster. There isn't much more to say about this phase. At first, I was lucky to get a single hit on Beppy without getting hit in return. Then I'd be able to get two or three. Until eventually, I would be able to get about 14 hits on the boss before dying, which was incredible progress that took hours and hours to achieve. Although, some of those hits came from invincibility frames cut Mugman gets from messing up the hit or getting hit and taking damage on the way back down. While invincible, you can get two free hits on Beppy to give us a bit more room for error. And after even more hours and hours of practice, stream after stream, dead brain cell after dead brain cell. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try axing a clown in real life just to see how easy it is compared to the game, but we'll see. I finally got to phase 4, which I think speaks for itself. Oh, oh my god. Okay, everyone shut up. Everyone be quiet. Everybody stop talking. Oh. We're fine.
my god. There are so many close moments there. <laughs> my heart races every time I watch that clip, but I guess we're not getting out of clown hell that easily. I really don't want to lose phase 4 after getting there again since it took over 30 hours to get a single attempt that far. And even though it's Beppy's second hardest phase for this challenge in my opinion, it's still overall a relatively easy phase if we consider some of the other bosses we've already fought as well. We need to hit Beppy 53 times here. We can get 6 hits on him before the roller coaster comes into the foreground. It's much faster now and has passengers in every other cart, so falling down while it's here is pretty much up to luck on whether or not we get hit, so I recommend not falling down. After it leaves, Beppy will spit out penguins and we can hit him while he does. Once I see one stop rolling and end up on the right side of the screen, I jump and ride the carousel over to it, fall down the platform, and whetstone the penguin. Fortunately, they only take one hit of whetstone to die, I also parry the other one that spawns on the right side, unless it doesn't spawn here since the locations and amount of penguins are semi-random. Sometimes these or another penguin spawns just to the right of Beppy's hurt box, which makes them hard to hit since being slightly off means hitting Beppy instead. I recommend immediately running back if this happens, since it's about to throw a baseball and the roller coaster is on its way back, making it too risky. The reason I specified to be on the right side instead of the left is simply that the carousel platforms are a little closer to the ground, making them easier to jump on, especially after parrying a penguin. The baseballs they throw are very annoying and can absolutely ruin a good run since they sometimes throw it directly at where you are, and sometimes where you're about to go. I like to stay on the ground to bait as many shots down there as possible while giving me an out by jumping on a platform which also avoids a roller coaster if it's close. You'll have to be prepared to do some tight jumps if they throw baseballs while you're already on the carousel, but usually this will only hurt your already accelerating heart rate. We simply repeat this process getting roughly 6-8 to eight hits on Beppy between penguin spawns depending on how quickly one gets summoned on the right side for me to focus on clearing. And even though it took me about 30 hours to get to phase 4 the first time, it took another 25-30 to 30 hours to get back. That's how brutal phase 3 is. I even tried using tape to give me a better visual cue for when to jump, which helps a bit, but not much since Charlie's mouth is already a pretty good one. And I get that this might be a gray area for some people on whether or not this is cheating. I think it's fair since it's not modifying the game and is something you could accidentally replicate pretty easily. Like what if there's a dirty spot on your computer screen that just so happened to be a good visual cue for this jump or maybe like a crack or something? Uh, would that be cheating? I, I don't know. If you think it's cheating, let me know in the comments and I still won't refight Beppy. I don't want to undersell how tough that phase is, but I also don't have much more to say other than that it's really, 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 really hard, which doesn't make for the most entertaining video. So without further ado, Here's my second time making it past phase 3 in a real attempt. Oh. Okay, it's one out. Okay, everyone shut up. Everybody shut up. Oh my goodness. One. Twenty-eight. 29, 30, 7, We did it. Yes! Oh my god! Yes! Oh my god! Beppy the clown went down! 
<laughs> yes! Yes! Oh my god. That was so risky at the end. I didn't know if I should have gone for... If I should have cleared her, I should have just kept attacking. I wasn't sure if I had count, but I knew it was so close. And I just went for it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. It, the victory quote... Um... Crap. Um... Can you tell I spent 50 hours on this? I didn't even... Um... You're a clown. Yet you make me frown. You... You such... You, looks like you're not the only clown... Here. So... Can you believe it? That was my third try? Thank you so much for the 15 whatever those were. Oh, and thank you so much for the $15. I said do it. Take it. Thanks for and Saggy for the 15 things uh, for the effort. Thank thank you so much. Uh, the clown is dead. I bet I bet people feel pretty stupid right about now if they voted otherwise. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 10 memberships. No, no, you madman! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss the rest of the series. And if you like the format of the IL-1 video, don't worry, I'll be putting all IL-2 bosses together in a tier list, an intro, and more for the full release.